And here's what Bill Gates looks like when his billions of dollars aren't tightly controlling the public's perception of him. Yes. That's how healthy the world's leading health authority looks. Bill Gates, who does not have a medical degree and was never elected to anything, has just announced he'll be opening a nuclear power plant in Wyoming. Knowing that it's trustworthy Bill, I can't imagine anything that could go wrong with that. Given that his tightly controlled public image never lets you see the trail of blood he leaves behind him. Speaking of which, if you want to see an expose on him that he doesn't control, go to CorbettReport.com and type in Bill Gates and watch the full documentary. I think you like it. It's become my favorite horror film. Of course Bill Gates is a great guy. Why else would he be spending millions of dollars convincing us of that? Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukadowski of WeAreChange.org. A lot of important information to get into, especially after the heels of the G7, now the NATO meeting, a lot of big implications here, and great reset globalist talking points, like of course, Build Back Better, which the G7 countries announced as an official plan moving forward. What's going to be happening here? We're gonna be talking about that. Plus a lot more on a YouTube channel that strives at changing your paradigm and understanding of the world. Because the current one we're living in definitely uh, d deserves to at least be highly questioned, as of course dangerous sociopathic clowns with delusion of grandeur are somehow in charge and have the monopoly of violence. And as people are waking up to the true reality of the way that the world really is, and some people exposing that sometimes pay the highest price, as we're going to jump into our first story of a former investigative Phoenix reporter who recently met his demise by allegedly deciding to end his own existence. This reporter also is the one that exclusively broke the bombshell story of the 2016 meeting that happened between former President Bill Clinton, and then Attorney General Loretta Lynch at a Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport tarmac. The meeting was, of course, deemed a huge conflict of interest since, of course, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton's wife at the time, was currently being investigated and running to be President of the United States. This, by and large, unethical move played a part in Hillary Clinton losing the 2016 presidential elections, along with, of course, other massive corruption and misconduct scandals that plagued her presidential campaign as people were finding out more and more about just how crooked and nefarious Hillary Clinton really was. Now, the demise of this reporter who broke this story right now is being investigated and is highly questionable, according to many people, especially the people who knew the reporter, like Jamie Hale, who wrote that she can't believe that this happened. Another aspect to really entertain here was that this reporter has been getting significant threats because of the work that he's been doing. The reporter, Christopher Sign, even publicly spoke about last year how he was receiving a number of threats which he considered very serious, which he says has been going on since the 2016 tarmac meeting between Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch. Days after that meeting, by the way, the FBI announced that they will not be bringing any criminal charges against Hillary, even though, admittedly, there were many violations of the rules and many laws which she violated. So, of course, with that and all the surrounding information, a lot of people had some serious questions about what actually happened here. Christopher, the reporter here, was, was fairly young. He was 45. He left behind a wife, three children, young children at that, family that some reports show that he was very close to, and even had to, to move a number of times because of the threats made against him. And of course, a lot of questions are still left unanswered here, as a lot of people are playing up to the possibility of there actually being some foul play here. A lot of people are pointing the finger directly at Hillary Clinton that has a past that is filled with a lot of corruption and also a lot of associates connected with her that have mysteriously passed away. Even the CBS local news in Las Vegas put out this article highlighting the 46 individuals like Barry Seal, Barbara Weiss, Vince Foster, and in total 46 individuals that were associated closely to the Clintons and then mysteriously passed away. That is a fairly long list. Does correlation prove causation? Absolutely not, but 
it's important to also keep an open mind here since again the Clintons are, are known for not playing by the rules as of course they knowingly screwed over Bernie Sanders Bill Clinton even made previous statements detailing how a Netflix TV series House of Cards which depicted which depicted the assassination of journalists as, quote, 99% real, a TV series that his close buddy Kevin Spacey was, of course, the lead anchor on. And, of course, Kevin Spacey, Bill Clinton, all famously were good friends with Jeffrey Epstein, hung out with them on multiple occasions. All of the three individuals have been accused of misconduct when it comes to inappropriate actions, especially Kevin Spacey, who had three of his accusers also mysteriously pass away after they came forward with allegations of absolutely unspeakable things that we cannot mention here. Now, there are a lot of coincidences here. That does not mean that there is a full, proven, bulletproof case. But according to my own personal opinion, there definitely should be a lot more investigations and a lot more efforts holding the Clintons accountable for a lot of their horrible actions that they have never answered for. And as the Babylon Bee poetically puts it, of course, in a satirical fake article saying, quote, that the CDC is reporting that people who have dirt on the Clintons have an 843% greater risk of prematurely ending their lives. And uh, they might actually be correct in that satirical article, but hey, if you or anyone else you know has dirt on the Clintons and they're looking for second residency, well, check out RelocateSafe.com. This is a company that we have been looking at for a very long time. We have officially decided to work with them after getting a lot of positive reviews. I have not heard one negative review about this company. They are doing a webinar this Wednesday helping people attain second residency in Panama, which is going to be drastically changing its standards and acceptance just later this year. If you want to find out more, go to RelocateSafe.com, where you can get all the information about possibly changing your residency to another country, which uh, you never know if you're going to need. Also, in related censoring and silencing people news, we have a crazy update with Brett Weinstein that, of course, we are going to be detailing and talking about extensively on LukeUncensored.com, our platform where we could actually talk about all the stuff that we cannot talk about on this platform. There's a word that if you comment, that if I say, if I talk about, your comment, this video would be automatically taken down if I mentioned it. I'm going to be talking about that extensively in relation to the really important, incredible work by Brett Weinstein that needs to be talked about at a larger perspective because this literally has life and death implications. We can't tell you more. LukeUncensored.com later on today, we will be talking about that. And now jumping into our main story, and that, of course, is the gathering of the globalist clowns confab that just happened at the G7, which, uh, according to a lot of people's perspective, didn't go that well for U.S. President Joe Biden. Uh, uh, with them, Prime Minister Modi, uh, President Ramaphosa, President Moon, he just came in. And the President of South Africa. And, and, and the President uh, of South Africa, as, 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 I, as I said earlier. Well, and you did, I said. I did not, I did, I, I, I certainly did. Uh, so, <laughs> you get a mention twice, so. Uh, I, I'll go over that again. I'll, I'll, I'll let me, uh, Let's go. And of course, as the world was watching, the journalists were quickly <laughs> evacuated out of that room and pushed away, shunned away, where at whenever there was an uncomfortable moment for the U.S. president, which there seemed to be a lot of. But other than uncomfortable moments, there was a lot of virtue signaling, as represented by the video that you're watching right now, of the supposed world clown leaders um, elbow dabbing each other. Some of them even still wearing masks for socially distancing, you know, because nothing says we're helping like elbow taps, which brings people's faces together closer than they would if they actually shook hands. But outside of that larger media display, the globalist clowns were all seen huddled together many times, patting each other on the back, congratulating themselves as most of these leaders created lockdowns, restrictions, made up decrees that absolutely ruined and destroyed the economy, which now these same globalist clowns were discussing on fixing. As the G7 just announced their official 
Build Back Better World, a slogan and term used by many special interests, multinational corporations, globalist henchmen, and of course the World Economic Forum, which pioneered the term a few years ago, a part of their larger Great Reset that they have been calling for, that essentially, by many implications, is being implemented right now. Build Back Better is the slogan is the word that many of these world leaders have been using for the Great Reset, which is, of course, a globalist talking point in implementing it. We say to build back, back better, we would say to really have a Great Reset. Conspiracy. To do things differently. To build back better. We're going to build it back better. And build it back better. It's my plan to build back better. Uh, start taking all the problems that have been created in right. education and mental health and start to, to build back in a positive And of course, what are they building back from? Well, the larger economic destruction that they caused, which ba mainly benefited their billionaire buddy pals that were able to keep their businesses and institutions opened while, of course, middle and lower class Americans were told to shut down and stay indoors. Walmart, Amazon, Costco, other multinational corporations have benefited off of these horrendous policies that now the same people who implemented are telling us that they're going to fix. And I'm sorry, but, but I don't believe them. A part of this latest announcement, their initiatives, is to quote, build infrastructure. And in the United States, when we hear infrastructure, especially being used by politicians, we don't mean infrastructure. We mean a whole bunch of pork, a whole bunch of wasteful spending, and a whole bunch of your money being siphoned away from you to be given to big, fat, bureaucratic cats that absolutely will provide you a horrendous service in exchange for the money that they took from you since, of course, they don't have any fair market competition against them. Again, the numbers here are huge. They're, they're insane. We're talking about po the possibility of $40 trillion put together by these developing nations into what we only know now as just empty slogans. There's also empty slogans about, quote, fighting climate change, which is absolutely hilarious since they're working in partnership with many of the companies that are making billions of dollars polluting the planet, as of course they work together in tandem trying to shift the blame on the individual because people use plastic straws. Another aspect of this great reset that not many people talk about is the larger plan from the World Economic Forum that details how, quote, you'll own nothing and be happy about it. And if you look at the trajectory of what many of these top billionaire multinational corporations are getting away with, along with the hedge funds, along with the big banks, along with the Federal Reserve, you see a coordinated effort at actually making that happen, especially with all the latest stuff that's happening with BlackRock, a company extensively connected to the U.S. Federal Reserve that secretly bails them out. But now this private firm that gets bailed out whenever they lose, whenever they get profits, they keep it themselves. This private company is one of the many companies that are making it impossible for people to own homes as they are buying up everything on the market above market prices. And when you look at this larger, very generalized blank statement of the governments taking more money, empowering the banks, empowering the billionaire multinational corporations, you have to understand that this has nothing to do about saving the planet. That is just an excuse for a lot of powerful people to use to extort more power and money and wealth for themselves. As I said before, the lockdowns were a perfect example of this. Lockdowns that, of course, that major globalists like Tony Blair don't want to go away, as he openly has been suggesting that people who didn't take a rushed experimental medical procedure should still be under lockdown even if they are small children. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, exemplified the perfect bland, meaningless, duplicitous Orwellian statement by saying, quote, we must build back better in a greener, more gender neutral, and perhaps a more feminine way, using all of the correct buzzwords that absolutely have the opposite meaning of what he purports them to have. And also, how can you have gender neutral and feminine at the same time? And whenever the world leaders that created so much havoc, so much pain on this world are coming together telling you, hey, now we're going to help and fix you if you give us more of your rights, if you trust us just a little bit more, if you give us a little bit of your money, 
all of you SOBs who are paying attention should say, hell freaking no. And if you agree with that, share this video with your friends and family members. And because you do, I'm still here right now outside the beanie compound. What will happen next? I don't know. Stay tuned for it. Got a lot more to say. LukeUncensored.com. Seriously, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. This is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.